Good morning. Good morning. Shabbat Tov. Last week we spoke about some of the halachot of running and exercising on Shabbat. Uh, somebody had asked, and uh, I said I would address it with regards to swimming on Shabbat. Swimming is a wonderful form of exercise. Swimming, besides for the issues of exercising on Shabbat, creates uh, other issues altogether. First of all, if we're talking about swimming in a natural body of water, such as a, an ocean or a river, a lake, over there there is a gzera, there's a rabbinic injunction prohibiting swimming in one of these bodies of water because a person might come to build a raft, the chachamim were gozer against it. Now, let's say we're talking about a regular case, let's say a person wants to go swimming in a pool, a private pool on Shabbat. There are many issues that can arise from swimming in a private pool on Shabbat. Many. Number one, if the water is heated, um, so that is an issue of bathing. A person's not allowed to rochetz kol gufo bechamin b'shabbat. That's already an issue. Even if the water is cold, you have another issue that if it's something like an infinity pool, which means that the edges of the pool are flush with the ground, over there, the halacha is that the chachamim considered it just like one of the natural bodies of water that we spoke about before, and the gzera against swimming is still in place. Now, most pools are not infinity pools. Most pools have an edge. If the pool has an edge, that already is considered separate from the natural bodies of water, and that gzera doesn't apply anymore. Now, also if it's in place around where the pool is, if, there are, uh, if there's grass or other you know, plants or whatever it is, and as a person's splashing, naturally what's going to happen is that water is going to overflow as a result of the movement, and it's going to water it. That's another problem, Pasi Kreshe, of Melechet Zorah B'Shabbat. Also, if the pool is in a place without Neruv, a person could be moving the water from place to place, in a place without Neruv, or when a person gets out of the water, he's also carrying the water out of the pool in a place without Neruv. That's another issue. If a person's wearing a bathing suit, um, depends what the fabric is, but the bathing suit, even put, uh, taking it off, drying up, and things of that nature can create an issue of sechita. That's why a person has to make sure that the bathing suit is something that is non-absorbent. A fabric that's not as absorbent like nylon or whatever it is, some, some sort of plastic, because otherwise it's from a sechita. Also, when a person dries up, when a person dries his body, especially his hair, you have to make sure not to um, do it so hard, not to put pressure on the uh, on the hair, especially because there is sechita b'sar Shabbat, at least on a rabbinic level. So because of all of these reasons, v'im chiser achat mikol elu, if a person is missing any of these, it is asur to go swimming, even forget about uh, exercise, even for enjoyment, even if a person enjoys swimming on Shabbat, if any of these things are missing, it is problematic. So that's why, in general, poskim tend to tell people to shy away from swimming on Shabbat because these issues exist. Yom Tov and Shabbat Tov.